that just gets cut and pasted into here. This language is so beautiful to do this in. If I did this in Java, in fact, I'm going to leave a copy of a version of this in Java. It's a holy mess. It's four pages long. You've got to make a class. To, it's just such a mess. You just can't do it so nicely. If any of you can figure out a way to do it in Java in like five or six lines like this, that would be really nice to see. And maybe you can, because you're more fluent in it than I am. But, but it's just so beautiful to do it here. Scheme also has a four-line version. Lots of languages. C, of course, has a one-line version. Of course it's zero. <laughs> you know, actually, so a lot of people solve this problem by handing in an empty piece of paper and saying, well, here's the empty Turing machine, and it outputs itself. <laughs> that, of course, is a trivial solution. But uh, right, Perl has a zero character version. C has a one-line version, but it's 200,000 characters. Um, this is it. The B is here. The B is also here. Inside the B, we print out the A part that goes up to here, and then we print out the B part. It's staring at you, and it's still hard to get. It's so annoying. <laughs> it really is. I, it, it, you really understand what, what Hartmanis said when he said you need to see it when you're five to really feel like you completely get it. I mean, there, look, I mean, there anybody can say I don't get it, right? I mean, there's a million things I can tell you about Turing machines, and maybe you get it, maybe you don't, you know, but who's to check? I mean, how can I really check? And give you a bunch of homework and get a sense. But here, I mean, I'm going to type this in in three seconds. Either it's going to spit itself out or it's going to not. <laughs> and it's going to work. So it's just so neat. And you can, you can, you know, you can watch it go step by step. But well, you can tell I like this. But, um, I really do. It's really cool. The strategy that they all use that you They all are based, they're all based on this idea. All viruses use this too? The part of them that reproduce themselves use this or something which you could probably guess is isomorphic to it. I don't know. I mean, I'm no expert, you know, hacking to every machine I feel like hacking into. I mean, maybe somebody's got a more clever idea of how to reproduce itself, but, but this is kind of the standard way to reproduce yourself. And you know what's interesting about debugging this? I mean, I spent a few hours last night debugging these things. Every time you make a mistake, you have to change two things, right? Every time you change this, you got to go change that. Otherwise, it doesn't turn out right. So it's very interesting. It's not at all like the programs you're used to working with. It's like, it's like you have threads not in the execution of the code, but in the text of the code. And you have to keep them all consistent. Well, what the hell does that mean? Sean, <laughs> the other thing with viruses is they don't want to look the same when they reproduce themselves. Oh. Part of the point is that they don't have the same signature, because that makes them too easy to find. Mm. So. Mm. Right. But I can make this, actually, and I'll tell you in a second. I can make this reproduce itself with a different last line every single time. That's what the recursion theorem really says. It says that you can do anything you want and have the program that's doing it output itself before you do it. That's what the recursion theorem really says. This is a special case. This is don't do anything after you reproduce yourself. The recursion theorem says you could always write a program to do anything you want, including nothing, and before it does it, it reproduces itself. I, I'm going to say that again, because that is the recursion theorem. A recursion theorem says that if you want to compute anything, you can write a program that computes it, and before the computation is done, your program also spits out a copy of itself. So that's what Michael's saying. That's what viruses really do. They don't just make a copy of themselves. They make a copy of themselves with some other side effect behavior and with some other signature, which makes them harder to detect. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and we're going to do an example just like that. Um, yeah. If we're going to do an example just like this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to write it on the board. I'll show you it on the screen because it's really easy to do. But before I do it, I need to go back and, and write down what the recursion theorem really is formally because I've just been blabbing about it but haven't written something formal there. Yeah. Is this like a deep idea in computing? Does this go someplace? Because it seems like well, it should. You know, it's like yeah, well, you know, it's, it's just sitting there in chapter 10 all by itself, which is <laughs> not. I don't, you know, no. I would say that if you think of computer science theory as these interesting things, you know, that spiral around and intersect with themselves and spin out interesting applications, and here's compilers, you know, and here's something else, and here's interactive proof systems, you know, and I think this thing just stays by itself in a little item going round and round and round and round. <laughs> I, I think in mathematics and recursive function theory it has a lot of applications, but I don't really think that it has a lot of uh, applications in other areas of complexity theory. It's very much a self-contained 
uh, thing relative to the other stuff we're talking about. And we could have we could have completely left it out of this course, and you would have still had a lot of the basics. I, I'm just too stupid to understand that. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, it's probably some kind of deep idea. Look, we're going to do something in a minute, which is a lot more rigorous than thinking about whether this is a deep idea. And I can barely really get my hands around that. And, and I'll show you what I mean in just a few minutes. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Now here. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Erica. Is the reason why you can't print out the brackets in the green box because you'd end up having to backslash them or something, and that would make the whole thing impossible? Oh, I mean, if I actually went ahead here and tried to do brackets dot x. That's just the language peculiar. Um. If you wanted me to do an open bracket and a closed bracket around this, and quote them out. That's basically what you want me to do. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you had to quote them out, then you couldn't end up ever making the thing mm -hmm. in the brackets up there the mm -hmm. same as the B. Yeah. Because there would be yeah. brackets in here that would be quoted out. Right. And then, uh, I'm not sure what happens when you put quotes inside these brackets. I think, I think we might actually, I'm not sure if we could do that. Oh. And I would be happy to actually try to play with it on the screen when we get there. Or maybe if the whole class doesn't want to, I can show you later and we can see if it works. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. Okay. This worked, and I was glad, so I didn't fuss around. I did try a bunch of other things that, that didn't work. And every time I went too far down a thread, I'd look at my watch and realize, oh, I got other things to do. I can't spend you know, the expected eight-hour thread here playing around with this cool thing that I just started. There's a lot of things to try. And I think I would understand it a lot better if I did try a lot of things. Put it this way, I thought a lot about giving this lecture without this stuff. And then I completely decided it was impossible. I really think you have a chance if you see this. And without this, there's just no chance. But with this, it's really worthwhile. Not world class, but, but still, still something cool. How is that? A little better? All right, anyway, best we can. Here is the file. It's called self. Whoa, that's ugly. All right, here's the, here's the program that we just wrote. Let me separate it from the other one. Forget about self C. I'll do that in a minute. But here's self. It should be identical to what we wrote here. Right? Make x print to self. Type make x print list quotes x print x print end. And then the thing at the second line is identical to the thing at the first line inside the brackets. You should be. Able, in fact, that's how I wrote it. I wrote the second line and then I just cut and pasted it into the top, just like I described to you there. All right, so now we, uh, we hit this F2, we define self. I'll put this back up there so we can see it. And now I'm going to, down here, I just write in self by typing it in. And there it is. Isn't that the coolest thing in the world? It's just so cool. <laughs> All right, so it's just identical completely to what's up there. It's not colored, though. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have turned that damn color off. <laughs> I was actually just completely neurotic about that. When you use a bigger font, the output goes off the end of the screen. So then it actually puts these little backslashes in to show you, you know, that it really means to be the same line. And then it doesn't look identical to that. And I go, oh, I hate that. It's got to be perfect. So, so there it is, I, completely identical. It works, just works, two lines long. And it's so much like the way the Turing machine does it. It's so easy to see what's going on compared to the C version, which I'll, well, the C version is pretty good too, but compared to the Java version. <laughs> yeah, you, um, you quote something so that it doesn't get evaluated. You know how in Scheme everything gets evaluated and you put a quote in to stop something from getting evaluated? Same thing in Logo. The dots are a special thing in Scheme, in, in Logo, that's a little different than Scheme. In, in, in Scheme, everything gets evaluated, period. And if it's a, I mean, it's a value, it just comes back a value. If it's a procedure, it evaluates the procedure. But Logo distinguishes between whether a variable is going to be evaluated as a value holder or as a procedure. And if you put a dots in front of it, it evaluates it as if it's holding a variable. And if you don't put dots in front of it, it evaluates it like it's a procedure. It's easier for beginners. Beginners have a hard time dealing with the fact that the same variable can be a procedure that gets activated and also something that just holds something. I'm sure you all had trouble with that at the first day, uh, or maybe not. All right. All right, so I'll leave that.